Okay, let's call a meeting. It's about five o'clock, uh, February 7th. Beautiful afternoon. I'm so surprised and pleased to see everyone here. <laughs> Jennifer, would you start with your introductions and we'll move around the room? Please. Yes, uh, I'm Jennifer Adams from Miami Township and I'm here to just say a little something a little bit later when you're hoping for public comment. So far. Okay. I'm Nicole Marvin. I'm from Cedarville Township. We're just here to observe. Mm -hmm. I'm Joe Krychek from Cedarville, but I own property in Miami Township. You own property everywhere. <laughs> I'm Chef Anderson. I live in Miami Township and here to say something later. Gila Pomeranz reside in Miami Township. Krista McGaugh, also from Miami Township. Bob Houston, Miami Township. Karen Landon uh, from Cedarville. Well, in, in, in Miami Township. George Landon, Miami Township. All right, well, welcome all you Miami Township residents <laughs> and Cedarville Township. <laughs> we'll bring them in. Um, we are happy to have everyone here this evening. Uh, we will get to the public portion of this program forthwith. A couple of items of business, if we could uh, just plug through those real quickly. I'm going to move, or I'm going to entertain a, a, a motion for adoption of the minutes of February 5th. Um, waiting February 5th? January. <laughs> <laughs> I so move. We have a motion. Is there a second? Um, just a name is still Kelly and Tracy just put Kelly and together. Okay, just and that's just. Because you can note that on the, on the minutes. Sure. That, that right now. We'll get that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Let's, so, second, so let's, second second. Them, second. let's second them first and then discuss <laughs> any changes. Okay. Anything further? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Thank you. I would now entertain a motion to approve the minutes of January 19th, 2020. I'll second that. I'll second that. Okay. Ms. Moyer second and we have a second. All right. Ms. Moyer. Move. We have a second. Uh, now, any further discussion regarding the minutes of January 19th? Uh, I would like to point out on the first page, right below correspondence, um, that I was to write a letter. I under I have not written a letter. I thought I was to contact Cedarville and Xenia townships regarding sharing costs. Uh, but I will, if indeed it was, write a letter, I will go ahead and do that, but I misunderstood. You wrote down the letter. I wrote down to write a letter, but that's it. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's your preference to, well, then to let's contact them however you can. I mean, you offer to contact them, you can do it verbally or you well, can do it. the motion says write a letter, then yeah. it should stand. I will okay. up my activity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Did you have anything? Yeah. Um, as was pointed out, uh, Brandon's last name is Morris, so that's been changed apparently. Uh, we, want to, one to we want to go to the very, almost the end, uh, following the executive session, or after the executive session. It should read something in the fact that following the executive session, um, Trustee Moore moved and Trustee Hollister second to enter into a, a, uh, an agreement for legal services uh, for the year 2022 with the firm of uh, Brocious, uh, Johnson, and Greggs. You'll have to tell us about that later, won't you? Sure. Okay. And those are the only changes I had. So if there are no other changes, may we vote on those, please. Uh, Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Great. Uh, we do need a motion to approve payment of the bills in the amount of $56,622.59. I'm going to just go ahead and ask for a motion for the total payment, please. I so move. And I second. The move, there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding payment of these accounts? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. We have a substantial amount of correspondence that I don't think will take the time to go over during the meeting. Uh, the only one that caught my eye that I wanted to personally uh, acknowledge was that uh, 
uh, along with the Tecumseh Land Trust. I threw that in for you. The Glen Helen Association has received a $995,000, that's thousands and thousands of dollars grant uh, towards improvements within the Glen, uh, including the destruction and removal of the old power plant. But mm -hmm. that's great. Congratulations to them. Yeah. <laughs> Get that amount of funding mm -hmm. for one project. Um, could, there any could I throw in something there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a good chunk of that is Clean Ohio Fund mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. that Krista McGaw and Don Hollister lobbied to before <laughs> eight years ago. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you just got elected and he's running for the next Thank you. <laughs> The contribution jar here next. Okay, thank you. Now, to the heart of our meeting, the public comment on agenda items. Is there anyone in the room this afternoon that would like to comment on items before or potentially before or to be discussed or not? Not on specific agenda items, I don't believe, but would you like me to? How about speak now or forever hold your peace? <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to uh, take a minute to tell you guys uh, thank you for working on the Kingwood uh, project and for intervening and staying the course. I know it's been a long process. Um, Don, you know definitely because you've been heavily involved, um, but it's you know, it's been extended until March 7th, which you guys know, and so it's kind of been drawing out. Um, we know that Kingwood is kind of upping the pressure a little bit, so we just appreciate you guys, and we appreciate you staying on course with us uh, and for listening to your constituents. So that's all I have. Thank you, Oh, and I should say, hi, Marilyn. It's nice to see you up there. I missed the first several, so. <laughs> uh, anyone's expecting uh, members of um, the best for corporation to be here this evening, which they asked to come and then kind of changed from being in person to doing the doing it by telephone with all members of the um, well with all members of the three townships that, that were involved uh, together. Uh, so that's what's happening there. I believe that phone meeting is set for. Is it Thursday, Don? Thursday at 10 a.m. Thursday. And with somebody from each township on the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, so is there anyone else who would like to speak this evening? I'd like to make a comment and Joe? say again, I appreciate the, all the hard uh, work that uh, the townships have put in and the commissioners and so forth. I uh, wanted to make, make clear, at least this is from my point of view, is that this has never been against uh, solar one point in, in this whole thing for me, it's the placement of the sensitive areas that we feel that they are placing and uh, there's huge places other than where they've selected here locally to put them that would be more conducive to uh, that large of an industrial uh, facility. And then I really appreciated the statement that Richard said at the last public hearing about the massiveness, the, the area that it would be. Uh, take away 10% of Miami Township's land here, so it's a it's a big thing with a lot of concerns. I think everybody needs to continually look at not only this project but other projects coming forward and find that that way that we can utilize that energy in the best methods possible and work together with companies and communities and stuff and, and approach it that way then what we've experienced in the past. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Joe. Uh, mystery man in the middle. Okay. Would you introduce Good yourself, please? I'm Jet Hanna. Um, I'm just surrounded by solar panels if the project comes in. Uh, just I'm here to support the no payments. And uh, all I've heard from other farms that have gone in, how the destruction, like they're not doing what they say they're going to do. They're bringing in, they're just level on the ground, not concerned about the topsoil whatsoever. So, and they're not, they're not doing at all what the contracts say. 
Well, thank you for stopping this evening. Uh, appreciate it. Chef, did you have something to say? Sure. I, I just wanted to join in, in, uh, in thanking the trustees for opposing uh, the industrial solar farm. It, uh, you know, and at so many of these gatherings, it is just so overwhelmingly against mm -hmm. this project. And, and we're talking about the people who are going to be living next to it. Not miles away, but mm -hmm. feet away. Mm -hmm. right. and, and that's us, that's a lot of us here in the room. And uh, it means so much that this township and the other townships are all opposing uh, that. And thank you very much and keep up the good work. Yeah. Having said that, it's yes, it's next to all of us, but the people that are saying to us that it's just not in my backyard. Yeah, our backyard is Glen Helen and John Bryan State Park and the Little Miami River. So very much we're concerned about our backyard and what the ecological impact is. I, and I am so grateful to this uh, town, the you trustees, and I will say I specifically voted on this issue. So Marilyn and Don, I appreciate right now you two especially. So yeah, thank you. Um, I I had a question. I had a question about the meeting on Thursday. Is that right? Is that going to be accessible for people to watch? No, it's a. Uh, We could ask our legal counsel. <laughs> there, there will be a legal counsel from each of each of the townships also, and one trustee from each. Uh, it's viewed as a uh, Is it potentially a negotiation. And it's parties to the um, that that entered into the process that it's, are invited it's, to. Uh, it's not. Part of the intervening process. It's it's Vesper uh, approached each of the townships. At least I'm assuming they approached us and asked, you know, hey, I'll be in town on Wednesday or Thursday. Would you like coffee? Let's talk. And the response, our response, and I assume the other township said a similar thing. We'll talk more with you, but only with the other townships. Uh, the there was a similar call a couple weeks ago. Uh, basically, we listened to the the things that they're ad they're adjusting their greater setbacks and uh, pictures of what it's going to look like when you drive down Clifton Road or on uh, seventy two. Uh, I was viewing it as a sort of as if we were going into executive session to discuss legal matter. Um, that's my answer. And it's, it's possible that there is that, that we should be having. Can I say something? Please. I think that the, the, what it's more down to is that I think they're in this the phase of the settlement talks, agreements, however you want to term it. So they would probably be uh, more uh, uh, condensed to only the township trustees and then their attorneys the, to be present on, the, on these kinds of talks. Uh, anything where you're gathering more than one, two township trustees, whatever, I mean, and it's an actual meeting. So basically, uh, it, it's part of that, where they're trying to negotiate a, a settlement is what they call it. But, but let me emphasize, I'm acting on the motion of our trustees saying we oppose it. Mm -hmm. The mo motion you guys had last session at the public hearing, you took that motion to the public? Oh, in one of our meetings. Yeah. We had twice we voted. In, in November, December? Yeah. Well, and then back in February also. Their, their preference would be oh. that there would not be any outside people, I'm assuming, very much so. 
I just have one one other question or, or just comment that I wondered if any of the counties since I think it was House Bill 52 is that right that was passed that would allow uh, counties as I understand it to to actually declare certain zones as protected from this kind of industrial installation perhaps because they were really good soils for farmland um, I just wondered have you heard anything to that effect from Green County or or other counties um, that was kind of a controversial law I think but actually it could perhaps have some potential for farmland preservation in the long run I just went to a township the Ohio Township Association meeting and it's either Logan or Champaign. Anyway, one of our neighboring counties to the north is in the process of uh, designating whatever they call it, off bound, out of bounds. Uh, but in this case, because Kingwood is already uh, it's late in the process, in the process yep. they're not subject to House Bill 52. But Power Siding Board may well take into account that the county commissioners have said they're, the Green County commissioners have said they're against this. Uh, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Logan County does have a good bit of preserved farmland and, and there's a real contingent that, that is valuing that. It's really very important farmland. And uh, so it'll be, that'll be an interesting model, I think, to see. Um, Green County could certainly do that for other areas that are not in this proposed zone, um, if, if they chose to do it. So I'm just, I'm going to be interested to see how that plays out. I think there's a smaller project proposed in Xenia Township that's going ahead. It's 20, 20 megawatts. I don't know if it's going ahead or not, but it's 20 megawatts. There are discussions. Mm -hmm. It's oh. outside of the OPSB purview. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. okay. I would be ready if I were you to fight many more of these battles. I, I mean, just my parents have a couple farms that both of them have been approached even since Kingwood's been in the area. And they have their farms signed up and to but it comes land trust and they're still being hassled by these companies. There's been at least three other developers sending letters that we know of mm -hmm. to the area. Ju to acres just outside of what's reason what's leased for Kingwood. <coughs> Bob, would you like to say anything? Yeah, yeah. Bob Houston. Um, <clears throat> I'll just add my thank you to your opposition to the project. Um, we just don't want to look back five years from now and let something like this go through and realize it's just going to be a disaster. Uh, we were up in uh, North Central Ohio about a month ago and there's a huge project up there with uh, uh, wind turbines and solar and it looks like an absolute wasteland. I mean, there is but few houses are left that people haven't haven't left as you know maybe like the dust bowl would look like. I mean it it uh, it it's um, it's the right thing to do. And you know I've I've been closely involved with the Comes of Land Trust for 30 years, and a project like this is going in the absolute opposite direction. Um, I think we're all for. Uh, landowner rights, but not at the expense of your neighbors, natural areas, and so forth. Um, and I think that's that's the the emphasis that that Vesper uh, Kingwood uh, says to the 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 landowners is, hey, you have a right to do what you want, but it's not that easy. It's like like free. Uh, I, I believe in free speech, but, but not when you're harming other people. So, 
I like the way that the opposition is built on this, that the, the citizens for Green Acres have done a fantastic job with, in continuing to do it. Uh, I'm proud to be a member of that organization. And uh, uh, going in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Bob. Anything? I'm Jake Church, live out on Harvison Road. Okay. Just wanted to come and say thank you guys for helping support and going against this solar panel here. So thank you. Well, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'm Karen Landon, and yes, I'm here in gratitude to you all for um, standing against this project and what their pictures don't show are my kids making snowmen and getting off the bus mm -hmm. and riding bikes and it's literally right there. Mm -hmm. So. I'm George Landon. Uh, we moved here from Kentucky about three years ago, and I can honestly say we would not, not have purchased our house as it is if there's the solar farm as proposed was, mm -hmm. was there. And it's, um, it, the pictures don't do it justice to how big it is and how, how devastating I think it would be. And I really appreciate you uh, hearing us and listening and, and the township. Thank you. Thank you, George. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Anyone else before we move on with the meeting? Uh, I'd, I'd like to say something. I'd like to endorse what I heard about other companies soliciting. I've heard from several people that have had multiple requests for leases on their property. And I would advise all of you to uh, lobby a little bit with the county commissioners. They need to get their work done sooner rather than later. If something gets, you know, every lease that's done now is before they set aside any land. And that seems to me to be something to keep in mind. This, the Kingswood is, a, is, is, you know, what we're all focused on, but it is not the only enemy, so to speak, in this, in this uh, possible takeover of big chunks of Miami Township. Had a lot of time to research how the townships and the counties are supposed to execute on Senate Bill 52, or how they do that. Um, have you heard? Is it does it come from the county down, or is it from the township up? Did the township association meeting cover any of that? How that's supposed to be executed? I can't answer authoritatively. My understanding is that it's the county that has the option and authority, not us. Okay. But I could be wrong. That's the way I understand it. So I, I would like to say something about that, if it's okay. Um, the last time I was at a commissioner's meeting, and it's been a couple months ago, but the commissioners, um, Green County commissioners, had said they were going to reach out to the townships about exclusion zones and ask for the townships input. Mm -hmm. And so I would encourage you, I'm going to encourage Cedarville Township to really start to push for exclusion zones just to get that in the works that if folks can start figuring out what areas should be excluded and encourage the commissioners to you know work on that sooner than later because um, yeah, the, the push isn't you know the developers that are out there and it's just going to continue so I think the sooner we can get our exclusion zones in place the better. Thank you. Uh, no one is being held against their will this evening, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, if anyone would like to uh, take their leave. Oh, Margaret's leaving. <laughs> Except Margaret. <laughs> One of these days. Uh, anyone is welcome to stay. You are also welcome to depart uh, at your leisure. Thank you. Thank you. You're all, you're all very welcome for coming today. Thank you. <laughs> She follows her. One of those really cool junior fire truck hats, even though I'm not a junior. <laughs> I'm very senior. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Can I scoot back up and speak? Come on up. Sorry. Seems so quiet in here. It does. There's no one.
Do you know who those people were? Most of them, yeah. Actually, I know all of them. I didn't recognize them right away. Most of them are members of your group? Yes. Yeah. Chief, what, have, what do you have for us this evening? What have I? What have you? Um, since the last board meeting, we've had 36 EMS incidents, five of which were in Bath Township, uh, and eight fire incidents, two of which were in Bath Township. Uh, it included, uh, fortuitously, an ice rescue. Uh, they rescued a dog yeah. from a semi frozen pond. Really? Yeah. Is Not as an exercise, but as the real thing? As the real thing, two days after the ice rescue training. I was going to say prior <laughs> or? No, it actually worked out pretty well. Great. Um, so the dog was reunited with its owners. And was, wasn't there something similar last year? We had two ice rescues last year, mm -hmm. which triggered the fundraising event and, and mm -hmm. the purchase of the equipment. So. No, did you have something to say? No. 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 Me and Margaret were going over numbers when the, the dog call came in. Oh. It was like, oh no. <laughs> and that was actually a better, I mean, both had good outcomes, but at least this dog was in water. Uh, a couple weeks ago, the same shift had a Two dogs that fell into a septic tank. Oh. Uh, and luckily they were removed and, and were fine and so excited to see our crew that they jumped all over the, the guys had to come back and pick us. So. C shift is I'm not sure what C shift is for, but uh, we should have I should have uh, three new volunteer members for appointment at the next meeting of the board. One who's kind of an EMT. I've got to try and figure out what she's saying in her application. She's taking a class, but I don't know if she's certified or not. So, uh, a big thanks to Dan, who has uh, repaired the wayward door handles on the older ambulance, so we can actually get in now. So that's <laughs> thank you. Keep gloves with that side. Of it. Yeah. You it open, no problem. If you flip it. Next time, I'm sure the door is just going to fall off. Fixed. But <laughs> but thank you very much. Much appreciated. Um, on the ice rescue topic, uh, we had seven members uh, join personnel from Zena Township and Fairborn for ice rescue specialist certification training on January 22nd. Uh, Zena Township hosted and taught the class at the old Green County Career Center. There's a pond back there. And, uh, so all, all seven of our people passed the class. Uh, we, we plan to try and get the other members through at the end of this year. I think it's called again. Benzie and Township was a class again. Um, and they have worked on reconfiguring the rescue truck so we can actually carry the rescue, the ice rescue equipment, so. <clears throat> which is nice. Uh, just a reminder, I'll be on vacation the 10th through the 15th. Uh, our new lieutenant, uh, Charles Klein, will start on Wednesday, February 6th, 16th, uh, finishing up his light duty due to his broken leg. Um, he'll work about two weeks on a 40 hour schedule and then. Um, gets released from light duty and we'll go into a shift and start doing his 24 40 year rotation. Uh, Denny has received preliminary drawing drawings for a new ambulance. Uh, he got those just Friday night from the dealer. So he's going, he's currently working through them. Once that's done, we get an estimate on the ambulance when we know what we're going to keep and what we don't want to keep, etc. And then we'll go from there. And then uh, Pushing the fast signs helped. Uh, we showed the public entrance sign ready by Friday, if not sooner. I have chosen the mower sedate style that they've sent me. For approval, the two were a little wacky, but I guess they saw Yellow Springs on our name. <laughs> One kind of looked like a psychedelic VW bus <laughs> or something, with a lot of yellows and oranges. I'm like, it's just a public entrance sign, good lord. But, um, but I mentioned it's the nice one. White, red letters. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that might actually be done tomorrow or the day after, so. They are fast. Fast signs. And, and finally, um, the world's longest project, yeah. solar tint, which has nothing to do with <laughs> solar panels, but um, apparently makes lobby panels as well as uh, solar tinting, is the contractor will be putting in the wall panels uh, in the next couple weeks. Um, you lost me. Wall channels. You're just gonna have to wait for another couple of weeks, and then see. It will be a big reveal. And <laughs> Spruce up the hallway. Oh. It's that one that's got the picture of you and Krista McGaw and uh, a lot of <laughs> 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 That's 
That's a good panel. tension too. Yeah. Uh, five panels. Five panels that will have the fire department's core values on them. Um, they'll be back there. Okay. So we've been waiting a long time. But finally that'll be done. And uh, yeah. Oh, we actually finally had our first uh, in-person training session, which was nice. And first time in 18 months that we've had the whole department together. Um, Kettering Health came and did a review of three trauma patients that we took to Soin, which was nice. And generated a little bit of flack from a certain former community member on social media, but um, we've survived that, so we'll <laughs> That is, on. we weren't wearing masks during the session. Correct, we were not wearing masks because everyone was vaccinated and boosted, and the one guy who's not was wearing a mask, but he wasn't in the picture, so. Plus we have this cool state-of-the-art Cleaning system. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but that was nice. It was nice to get one together. So, and uh, the surgeon and the uh, trauma manager had really positive feedback on our, our patient care. So that was very good. Very nice to hear. And uh, that's it. Did we bring out Randy too, or Randy? What do we call her? Oh, the dummy. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know if we ever had a name for. Didn't we ever name her? I don't think so. No. I mean, someone may have, but. <laughs> Does she still exist? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's up on the training mezzanine. I haven't seen her for a long time. Uh, you should get around, you know. Yeah. <laughs> now, this one was just uh, reviews. It was nice. They, they had a PowerPoint that included x rays and photos of. Kind of his chest open, which. You know, kind of thing. Most people want to see, but it was interesting for us. Uh, MRIs and all the follow-up stuff, so it was interesting mm -hmm. to hear. Uh, one of the patients in early April spent a total of 122 days in the hospital, between the hospital and the rehab facility. Really? Um, and then they were saying that the nurses at Kettering Hospital, where he was transferred to from Soin, um, as it started getting nicer out, they thought, you know, we should take up a, uh, a collection for that guy who was here, who's now in rehab, we believe, and got a lawn service to go take care of his lawn, and then they found out that he had just been released from rehab and was mowing his lawn. So, uh, <laughs> apparently he made a hell of a recovery. <laughs> After 121 days, I hope. I can't even imagine what Bill is on that one. So. Well, they saved him a little bit of money by taking, taking it was raining that night, so the helicopter couldn't fly, so that saved him a little bit of, <laughs> of cash. Yeah. <laughs> Our bill's a heck of a lot cheaper than the helicopter, so. But that is it. That is all. Anything else for the chief? Marilyn? No. Done? Well, only to comment at the Township Association conference. Uh, Colin had been there the day before and earlier the same day. Uh, and he was known at the Fire Chiefs Association table because he's about to become president. <laughs> you are already. And then right across the uh, aisle was the MediCount table. They're the folks that do the billing for uh, ambulance runs. And they knew who Colin was and who Miami Township, Green County was. They love us. We are one of their best customers. Primarily because so many people get insured. Get so. <laughs> we have a really high payment rate. So. Who are insured. Yeah, who are insured. Okay, anything else? Let's move to cemetery. Okay. Mr. Sexton. Since the last meeting, we've had three burials. Two natural burials. Yeah. And one last Tuesday and one today. Yeah. Get to build up with it. Oh, yeah. How, How thick was the ice? Probably four inches. Oh my God. We got up. Ice on the ground. So the ground's froze probably that the man's coming out in little chunks. It took a minute to get through, but we managed. I'll use the back of it, something to do a little weight. Yeah, I heard that for a burial earlier in the week. The yeah, I center. tried to excavate on the, the one in, in the traditional in the old part, and it just drug me all over. Is that right? So I had to go to the But we, we managed. So that's what we did to the next center. And that's all I had. Any questions for? Other than I have to do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Sexton, Logan, and Orr. Done. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, may we turn to the road? We did. We did. Ice. We did. Ain't bad ice. Mm -hmm. There might be more coming too. They iced first, and it was like yeah. five miles an hour. Right at <laughs> Better you than me, buddy. I said past two rooms, and I was going to hit But once it started sleeping, we had to use some grit. Travel back. Didn't Did you have to back up High Road off of Cornell? I actually went down. Did you really? Yeah, I, I rode the edge. I never rode the edge. But probably should have backed up. <laughs> yeah. But it was busy. Brandon was busy. I was busy. So we got to take care of it. Well, he's going to haul salt tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go finish doing a kickback. It's mm -hmm. going to off the road. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know what the rest of the week will be fine, so I'm sure you will. How are our roads holding up? I've noticed some terrible potholes on that Yellow Springs Road. I've got example. a couple showed up small, but you know they're going to get bigger. As soon as it warms up. Yeah, I know you can't, can't really can't do anything until it Once dries out. Once we get a few more days, through the high 30s, they're going to be. Hopefully not many. It's only a few spots where they're showing up. Not like it used to be. Because we're kind of living in the room as mm -hmm. best we can. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll have a few. Well, I didn't, didn't think you wouldn't have any, but I hope it wasn't as bad as some of the ones I've seen. No, some of Driving out of town. Out of my country. They can have them. They can yell at us. They're scary. Mm -hmm. yeah. The part of that is a little concrete there. The chunks coming out of that concrete. Mm -hmm. But that's all I did. That's the uh, meeting with Stephanie this afternoon, she was showing me pictures of me. Oh, uh, not Danielle Springs, right? Mm -hmm. Speaking of her, have you had an indication of when we need to put in our, our road? She was just sent us a packet. And huh? usually we get it an hour or the middle of last year. It was supposed to be in like February last year. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. Nothing, huh? I guess you tomorrow after the day. For, for the record, would you remind us what that is? It's the collective bid package for a road repair, paving, the chip ceiling, and stuff through the county. They send us a bid packet. We put that on our and turn it back in. Helps them with their prices. The collective, you know, all the townships. Well, the county. We try and do a road tour. We were not able to last year just because of that health conditions. Hopefully we'll be able to this year mm -hmm. since the uh, numbers have been going down. I guess you guys a convertible to drive around for the road tour. <laughs> when you say the road tour that's for the trustees and road guide to go around? And yes. To check it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then it's which, which, which road do we ship? Yeah. Which road yeah. do we... I, I understand. Uh, we did it last year so we won't do it this year. Or did something last year, we add something else this year. So we'll figure out when that's due and, and uh, schedule recording. Okay. What else you got? That's it. I haven't heard anything more about new dump truck, so. Come on, I'll do it over. I'll get KU and do this. I'll do it. I have to go over here and get a table in the spare. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because the other one's kind of bent and I had to straighten it up. I took the old one and put it on. Mm -hmm. And it made one around and then they chunked it out of it. So. So oh, in brittle, so I'll have to get a new spare table. But the, the spider is good, because it's a table. Yeah. It's, yeah. But I'll get one for you. That way we have to spread it over. In theory, we get this in August. I guess I'll have to double check and see whether there's a build date on the thing yet or not. Uh, That's our building. Uh -huh. really yeah. Speaking of build dates, uh, I talked to the uh, surveyor this morning who's surveying the Oak Grove edition, oh, yeah. and he hasn't started looking at the <laughs> job yet. <laughs> I think I think same think, guy. It's the same. No, uh, it's not the same guy. And you have a different person this time. Uh, well, it's a different different company. It's actually the one who did um, uh, the Glen Forest East, the front part. Okay. A long, long time ago, but uh, Doug Sutton, Sutton Clinko, Clinko and Sutton. Also did the new addition at Clifton for Lamar. Remember? Yeah. But that's not who's doing. Yeah, that's who's doing. Oh, okay, they're out of the room. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, he assures me they'll get it done before 
before you get the fence moved from Nick. It's going to spend some money like a movie. He says he had a movie sheet left in it. You know, like he started with it. Because the whole thing is included in the survey. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I picked up with Nick. Yeah. I, I wanted to walk around back there and look. I wanted to take a walk. And he got it like, hold on. He yeah. Sheep, yeah, he sheep won't bother me. You know, so well, I wanted to walk around and look at that ground and see what's there. Mm -hmm. and soft spots in there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. I'll talk to him because he wants me to have a clear path like he did last time so he can move. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to him. Move it to the tree line? or Like or? in front where he's going to move his fence to in front of the climb right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wants you just a pass so he can set the fence mm -hmm. Like I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. But tell him it's not permanent. Right. Right. But our oak uh, uh, road goes to the pine tree. It goes past them, goes to the back fence. Really? Yeah. It's the whole thing. But the trees stay. No. Trees all the pines come out? Yeah, all the pines come out. Big pines? Yeah, all the big pines come out. Okay. We put oak trees in there. Okay. That's why it's called the road. Anything else for the road department? Carolyn? No, sir. How about fiscal officer? Yay. Yay. Um, so the resolution is correct except for the number. It's not eight, it's number nine. Resolution 20. 22-09 Amendment of Temporary Appropriations, whereas an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize an amendment to the following temporary appropriations. And the general fund, I increased workers' comp by $50. Travel and meeting increased by $500. And gas tax, I increased natural gas by $500. Road and bridge, workers' comp was increased by $150. And uh, in the fire levy fund, I increased workers' comp again by a thousand, repairs and maintenance by two hundred, and contractor services by four hundred. Lastly, in EMS billing, I put some money in operating supplies because we hadn't done that because it just wasn't any money there anyway. A thousand dollars. There you go. Okay. Uh, is there a motion for resolution? 2022. So moved. Oh, 09. Oh, 09. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion regarding that resolution? Harry Nunn, may we vote, please? Sure. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you. Um, if you want, I could go ahead and make a preliminary um, guesstimate of our appropriations for the year based on what we've spent last year. That's pretty much, you know, how it's done. And give that, to, give a copy of that to everybody. You can get a chance to look over it and then you can, you can make some suggestions or, you know, move money or whatever you want to do. How, how about if I do that? Just to get the ball rolling. I mean, Marilyn and I went over, you know, we did some studying, and um, she's getting a better picture of what's going on. And, um, you know, primarily, and I've said this again, it's just, um, you know, the fire department is um, where we're going to be the tightest. Mm -hmm. And um, so, since salaries is the really tight line. <laughs> So that in the EMS, um, maybe, you know, so we'll just go with, we can, I can get, yeah, just create a document and get started and we'll go from there, if you want. I'd be happy to do that. Uh, cur currently we we have an appropriation through March, is that the first quarter? Yeah, we have to basically um, submit to the auditor by April 1st. April 1st. Mm -hmm. good to know. And, and, and keep in mind, and I know Don and Chris, you've done this many times, but Marilyn, even though they call it the permanent appropriations, it's still flexible. 
Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, we, we do it all the time. Like, yeah, <laughs> Every meeting. No, it's not, well, it's well, and then especially in the beginning, because, you know, you just, you, your appropriations are a little little, and um, stuff happens that you don't, you don't know is going to happen, kind of stuff, so. Would we be allowed to uh, appropriate for, like, uh, fire and rescue, or, you know, and jiggle inside that appropriation without reappropriating? I'm not sure how you... I mean, do we do have to do jiggle? each line <laughs> of the budget, or the former formal appropriation for, like, roads, but then we could adjust within it without having to have new votes? No, you can't do that. Okay. You, you, like, no, you mean like Rob Peter to pay Paul within a fund? That's mm -hmm. called, yeah, that's, a, that's when you're, you know, you have, it's a resolution. Okay. You, yeah, I have to do it that way to get, yeah. So we don't have to have any kind of huddle, get together Saturday morning kind of look we at all could. We could, but I mean, but, uh, you know, if we feel like it, but let, let me just go ahead and um, do, you know, uh, do a faux, if you will, um, permanent appropriation proposal for the year. Okay. And make sure everybody has a copy. And then see, we'll see what everybody's thinking. And um, yeah. have it in plenty of time to mull it over. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would, do, I would do this, you know, in the next, I mean, Probably not this week, but next week or something like that. Just for a while. You know, in my questions. spare time. <laughs> and we could ask questions and yeah, sure. ask for things and yeah, yeah. discuss things. Okay. But I was going to bring that up under new business, so thank you. Oh, I was going okay, to yeah. inquire about the process and what, what your usual process is. This is what you do. Mm -hmm. Well, not to bring anybody down, but just to bring the reality of it. Uh, if, if everybody doesn't know, you should know now that uh, we're spending um, salaries and fire in 2021 a cool half a million dollars, which is a cool $2,000 more than the tax revenue that we receive from uh, the levy um, the, uh, prior. So we've got some work to do. To get us to uh, next next spring, which is, I believe, the earliest. I'm gonna have to check with David just to make sure. Next spring, I believe, would be the earliest we could get on the ballot for a uh, fall distribution of 23. I believe that's where it's. You can always borrow, but I think that's terrible if you borrow. But I mean, if you haven't got it, yeah. Right, if you, can, uh, if you don't have it, how you gonna pay back what you borrow? Yeah, right. Now <laughs> uh, there's there's. 300 plus thousand in the carryover on 60,000 a month of expenses, give or take. Um, so, yeah, that's not, that's not just salaries, that's what you're saying, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. everything. Yeah. But that, that's not going to get us through the whole year, so we'll end up putting general fund money in. in uh, yeah, you didn't say we, we don't send ARPA money, ARPA money. Yeah, you know, I don't yeah. know what is supposed to happen, though. Do you? Um, we have half of it, and we'll get the other half in April. Um, but the, even if you took ten thousand, even if you took ten percent out um, to, for the commitment for the broadband to the county, which is what they're kind of kicking around, that's twelve thousand five that you're taking out of one hundred twenty-four. So that leaves you with one hundred twenty-four or one hundred thirteen thousand, roughly, um, that we could put back into the fire. So that. There's no question that would help. Could you yeah. back up? That's good, yeah. Broadband for the county. Pardon me? Could you back up that broadband for the county? What is the, the, the county's program is underway to uh, provide broadband access to all residents of Green County, fiber optic broadband to all residents of Green County. These are residents outside, outside the municipal of corporation limits of, 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 of all the county and the subdivision. Uh, and they put out a request for a proposal to, uh, uh, and received three, three proposals back, and I believe they awarded it to Cincinnati Bell. Uh, and right now, it's, it's, it's in the stage of, of the engineers of Cincinnati Bell trying to figure out exactly how to run all these fiber optic lines and how much each would cost and, and everything. 
And then, once those numbers are down, then the county is going to see how much uh, their AR, AR money, or the infrastructure money, or broadband money, there's like four different sources now for this, for this funding, uh, how much that's going to cover, and what the shortfall might be, and how much they would potentially ask each township to contribute onto the program. And the, the prevailing wisdom that I had heard was perhaps 10% of the ARPA money that each political subdivision, each township received. Uh, of course, the big townships got a lot of them, a lot more than the smaller ones, but 10% sounds. Or 10% of our ARPA money would be there for everybody broadband in the township? Well, it, we would contribute to it. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that, I mean, that's. But the effect, the I ultimate mean, effect would be. Yeah, it's going to Yeah, cost. I mean, I'm just, I'm just realizing, because I, 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 I thought I attended every meeting and I hadn't heard that that was that big of a boom. I mean, that's a pretty amazing. Uh, well, it, it, that's <laughs> really, word. that's a small amount. I mean, the, uh, the total package would probably run somewhere in over $100 million. Yeah. Right. But if we could buy in for 10% of our upper money right. to get, we're talking about all the people who come to me and say they don't have yeah. any internet access would have it. No. Gosh, do we believe that's true? <laughs> uh, so far. I'd give half of our upper money today. No. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, as I said, you're going to get oh, an estimate from Cincinnati Bell, and then, yeah. and then you will know whether it's true or not. Right. Yeah, I really said. Does that mean that you don't have to pay for internet service? No. You would get a you would get a fiber optic to your front door, and then you would pay to hook it up, yeah. and then you would pay uh, Cincinnati yeah. Bell every month for yeah. internet service. Yeah, but yeah. I already get through AT and T. Yeah, but way. for example, Eli Hurwitz, who was out on Hill Road or someplace, mm -hmm. he yeah. can't he can't get internet to his house, and they. That they told them they'll build lines out there if you pay thousands of dollars. No, actually, it's through DirecTV we get it, and that's our only option. Yeah. Oh. Spectrum always asks us, oh, blah, 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 blah. sorry. They, they, they won't come out there, Spectrum won't come out there. Yeah. Which so is a mile outside that's of town. Amazing. I didn't realize. Is it too far for oh. them to bounce off the telephone? Where is it? Meredith? It's not Meredith. Um, I, I Eli Eli's there. Uh, yeah. Well, he, he, yeah, he's he not, he he can't pick up. No, uh, it'd have to be something much closer no. to where he is. Not that I think there may be something there, there, but okay. Well, it may be up. The access to, to the internet stops. Yeah. So, Partly up there. Really I mean, there's there are several different ways that people get internet. If they get it through their phone lines, they can only be a certain distance away from the switching station. There's, there's just a limit to how far they can send the signals on the copper pairs. Otherwise, then you're into satellite or or some other or cable if it exists in the, yeah. in the township. But if you're beyond that that area immediately around the municipality, then you're not going to get it. What kind of time frame? I am very keen on broadband, but this is we were talking budget. <laughs> uh, that's true. <laughs> okay, they uh, talk. There's no no time. <laughs> there's no timetable at, at the present, Marilyn. No timetable okay, at the present. It's too early. Uh, how are you doing on your report? I'm, I'm, I've been done. Okay. <laughs> Don seems to want to talk budget, so you want to talk some budget there? No. <laughs> well, this was related to budget because it's, we're talking oh, I know. about shortfalls. Yeah, yeah, we kind of, yeah, this, we're talking money. Uh, zoning uh, yeah, inspector. <laughs> I issued a permit. <laughs> First one of the year. It's a it's a significant addition to the the garage building. Um, if I say the Dawson property, does that clue everybody in where we're talking about? Or the entrance to Whitehall, mm -hmm. the, the the house right there on 68. The house isn't big enough. Um, they got it. Yeah. There. <laughs> There. There's a, a, a relatively new couple living there, and, and they've got a lot of stuff to store, apparently. Anyway, I had a nice conversation with the contractor. Um, the, I just got confirmation back from the Zoning Commission on, on the latest, that we're ready to go with the latest version of the PUD chapter, so I'll be sending that to regional planning post-haste for their review so we can 
then go ahead and go through the public hearing process again. Um, let's see, the, the zoning commission had their annual meeting in January. Uh, nothing has changed. <laughs> Fred is, will be chair for another another year. They they allow up to two years by, with their bylaws for someone to stay in that position. Um, and I don't believe there was any any other uh, significant issues discussed. They just reviewed what had taken place last year and what they were where they were heading this year. Um, which is continuing trying to update the code mm -hmm. and maybe doing some a little bit of triage about what's opposed to what's easiest to change, maybe what's most important to, mm -hmm. to update. We'll see, we'll see what happens with that. Um, Chris already knows um, had a had an interesting meeting today. It was hosted by regional planning for a. A family here in town who, who would like to have enough room on the family farm for each of the children to have a house, but they don't have enough road frontage on the farm to allow that many lots. And, and I've been working with them for some time. Well, here you can try this, you can try that, you can do this, you can do that. And it's finally seemed to boil down to where anyway, they can get more frontages to build more road. And so we had. A, for the first time, and this is something I didn't really know about, um, uh, Stephanie, the county engineer, said, here is actually the state code about building township roads. And there are very specific uh, conditions under which you can build a public road. Um, for example, you're allowed to build a road that goes from an existing public road and makes a U and comes back to existing public road, regardless. Okay, but if you want to build a cul-de-sac, it has to serve at least three residential lots. Or lots that are available for residents. You don't, I guess you can't make somebody build a house on each one, but it has to at least be long enough to do that. In the first 500 feet. Yeah, oh, and yeah in, the, in the first 500 feet there. No, I don't know if it has to be three in the first, is it three in the first 500? I believe so. Three, I, I was a total of three, and yeah, the first 500 feet have to be serving. You can't. It can't go wandering through, you know, somebody else's land that suddenly balloon into a development out at the end. Anyway, I, I've got that copy of that document for me to digest because, um, for the most part, all of the, the house building in Miami Township has been just splitting off lots on existing roads. Uh, we have two exceptions, but they, they, uh, you know, they're 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 both fairly old. The, William and Mary Court and, and Willow Fields and no one, you know, who knows what could happen next, but we're not used to doing that. And finally people are, you know, people are pushing a little harder to, to get a little more space to build. Carol and Lamont. Lamont precedes our current. Yep. They're grandfather. But the unusual thing about Carol and Lamont. In, at least in my opinion, is that when we did the original code, we looked at existing s subdivisions. The, there's a subdivision uh, west of Clifton along 343. There's a little one out on over Forest Clifton Road. There's, there's a couple more, you know, where there are a bunch of small lots and houses. And, and they were all designated as residential. but. Carol and Lamont are, is zoned agricultural. They, and it always has been, which is the, you say, well, it doesn't make that much difference because our agricultural zone is a residential zone. But in our agricultural zone, you can build any accessory structure you want. No size limit, no location limit. And that, whereas if it's zoned residential, there are some limitations on, on how you do that. And, that, that's a little bit of a conflict. Like the permit I just issued for the former Dawson property, that's zoned agricultural. They can, they can build anything they want there. And it seems, you know, like, well, wait a second, that's a house. You know? Can the people on Cheryl and Lamont, do they know that they can build anything they like? I don't know if they know. I'm not going to go out and, and, and call them up and say, you know you can build anything you want. And, and just dial my number and I'll, no. Um, 
this is on TV, but, but we're watching. Yeah, we watch. Well, and sometimes people actually do watch. But you know, that's part of the the little. You know, we had a, a BZA hearing to determine whether an existing accessory structure could be converted into a house because it didn't meet the setback requirements. Because it didn't have any setback requirements when it was built. But there are residential setback requirements. Mm -hmm. And um, that was, was resolved by the BZA. I don't know if that happened in between, whether I reported back to you on that or not. But anyway, that, uh, the variance was, was granted. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> I think those are the, the important items. Carol and Mo were supposed to be connected. They were supposed to be a loop. Oh, and ultimately it was it was going to go further. Or no, it wasn't going to go further, but it was a horseshoe. It was, it was going to be, supposed yeah. to be a horseshoe. Mm -hmm. No, I. But uh, Fulton's wouldn't let. Oh, wouldn't sell that land or. It, that is. Well, something. It's Green Acres. I think there's another word. The name of the plaque mm -hmm. was that yeah. one out there. I, mm -hmm. um, I never, I, until I was doing this research, I never thought of it as having a, you know, having a name. It was always just Carolyn Lamont. Mm -hmm. No, it, um, the, the unusual thing about that was it was also developed before anybody was paying very serious attention to runoff problems. Mm -hmm. As Certainly. we all know, it just Certainly. barely survives out there. But the amazing thing about it is that every one of those little lots has a septic tank on it. And they all work. We've never had any issues that I'm aware of. Do they also have wells? They all have wells, too. Yeah. Um, small lots? I mean, they, okay. they could not build new ones today on that area that they have. But the ones that they have have, have continued to function satisfactorily. Hmm. Thank you, Richard. I have a question. Yeah. We have a Mary. The, the last house down in the colts at the end. How many houses were they building? How many houses? They've got two basements, Doug. The foundation up on them. I've, I've issued, I'm trying to think, there are two new houses, I think, There's going down on the left there. go in. On the third, the end. Yeah. On the curve down in the, in the loop. They built the other basement for the wall. If they're digging another basement. Oh, on the, back, the same lot. Mm -hmm. Well, that seems a little strange. It's, well, uh, maybe I should do some research. You never know. Okay. Just curious. I'm glad to have your eyes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So are we. Uh, new business. Any new business before the board this evening? It's not official evening. Hearing um, none, it, um, yes, sir? Um, or yes, ma'am? this new business? Hey. This is new business time. I, I, the ARP resolution. Was this here for tonight, or is this oh, here? Right, a resolution. Which? Oh, no, that's, remember, we, we are in no hurry for that. That will be okay, sometime I'll, um, before April. If, may I ask a question about the potential levy? Absolutely. That you mention every once in a while? Uh -huh. um, you say we have to, it, is that would be at a continue, what, what do they call that, where you don't, Raise the taxes. Uh, this would be a new levy. New levy. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't mean a <coughs> renewal. Likely, we would need a new levy, but it's a, it could be renewed. But we, you're saying likely a new levy. Yeah. Okay. Just and then that it could be a replacement, which is basically the same thing as a renewal with with an increase. But, and there's two two kinds of. I can't remember the term, but I think it is right. You can keep going with the same levy you have, and it will keep generating the same amount of money. Or you can can reinvigorate it so it's it's base it's it's millage is now applied to the, the current tax base, and it generates more income. Is that you can do both of those? <laughs> yes. Under which name? I'm not positive. Okay. I know it's critical to to get the right one when you absolutely when you do it. yeah. <laughs> and then, no question. And then that would time frame that would be twenty three. Spring of twenty three. Uh, well, it depends on when we can put it on the ballot. 
if we can put it on the ballot um, spring of 23, it would be collected probably fall of 23. Hmm. And then in order to get it on the ballot, we got to back up and do the work. Well, it has to be 90 days prior to the election, whatever election you choose. Okay. And we don't, like citizens, we don't have to get signatures and things. We just no. ask for them. No, we just, okay. we just write them up and send them in. The only thing you don't want to do, Marilyn, is, is have a special election just for your levy. You want to do it when the voters are already going to the polls. Well, the only reason to avoid that is you have to pay for the election. Yeah, <laughs> that's the reason. So that when a few people show up, you need fewer to pass. That is Yeah, sometimes there are strategies. Um, Don, because you're the CDC representative, is it wasn't one of the things the CDC was YSDC. going to YSCD, okay, mm -hmm. going to do was was not literally coordinate, but have with different <laughs> entities that yes. put things on the ballots talk to each other. And tomorrow is our uh, <coughs> reorganization meeting. Mm -hmm. Normally it would have been January, but we postponed it to because February. And also adopting uh, goals, and that's one of the proposed goals. Because mm -hmm. so I know that the school system is talking about already two different possible levies in the near future. And here we are talking about one, and, and mm -hmm. it's about time to not have them all on the ballot at the same time. I think. Yep, that's, it, I'm glad you brought it up, but that's, that's pending. Okay. <coughs> any old business this evening? Don, you got any old business? Not that I, remind me if there is something. <laughs> else. Marilyn, does Don have the old business? I think he's taking care of his old business. Okay. You have the old business, Margaret? No. Not that she wants to. No, no, sir. Hearing no old business. Do you have Thanks any old business? Asking. I have no old business. Hearing no old business, no new business, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. No, I, no. I move. I move. I'm going to get this. <laughs> and I second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>